Before we jump into the issue of resolving this particular axis over here, we'll first discuss about how I'm actually running this whole RabbitMQ inside a Docker container and how these topics are created and how these authentications are even happening and where is these things I have already set up. Well, in order to understand that, if you just go to some of the articles which I just searched uh, before we configure it, you can see that we can configure the whole RabbitMQ on its startup within the Docker file itself. And that's something you can do it in two ways. One is you can create a rabbitmq.config file and then you can push everything over there. Or we can also do it from within the Docker compose file. But I suppose the Docker compose file will not have all the definition. And that's the reason why you need to create a definitions.json file as well. I almost followed this particular document to understand how things work, but you can also do it in your own way, in a much better way if you really wanted to. But I tried doing it in my own way of how I can spin up things. And to understand that, I'm going to go to the original project that I have already created so that I can show you how the RabbitMQ configs are configured. So you can see here, we have a definition.json file. It has a Rabbit version and there is a RabbitMQ version. And you will see that there are some users that I have set up. There is an OPS1, admin user, OPS2, uh, OPS0 user, something like that. And also there's a vhost. There are some permissions I have set for all these users that what they can do uh, literally. Also, there is a topic permission for all these users. And also there is a global parameter which I have used for the cluster names and the internal cluster IDs and stuff. But the most important part to really focus on is going to be these queues and the exchange along with their bindings. This is what is actually happening while you see in this particular portal, all these things are automatically configured for you. What's really happening over here is within this queues, I'm also telling that there is a name that I've required for this queue, which is the inventory.customer, and it should be vhost accessible. Um, and the durable is true and the auto delete is false and the arguments is going to be the xq type of classic these are the things that you can configure via the code as well if you follow the documentation over here and you can see that all this information you can hard code within your code over here and you can pass it on from the code itself so you can see that the auto delete as false exclusive as false durable as false or true whatever that you really require and the queue names and stuff you can write everything via the code something like this or you can also configure that within this particular definition.js file and that's exactly what i have did for the products as well and that's exactly what i have did for the exchanges as well as you can see for the topic.exchange i'm also telling that i need this exchange to be available or bounded to these two topics and if I don't do this binding, then even if you try using that exchange for publishing and listening to the particular topic, you are going to end up with no message being listened or published because this binding is what is going to define you like how you are going to be listening to that particular topic and publishing a message to that particular topic. So make sure that you do this binding. If that's not there, you need to go and manually do that from the UI. I mean, you can go into that particular UI and do that. But the problem is every time your Docker is going to be deleted or new containers are going to be created, these messages are going to be deleted for you. So all these settings and the configuration that you have are going to be deleted. So make sure that you actually write everything into that particular definition.js file. And that definition.js file is going to be spinned up using a Docker compose file, which I was talking about via the rabbitmq.config. So you can see that within this rabbitmq.config, I have given all these details over here, along with the definitions location over here. And that's the one which I'm actually loading from my docker compose.yaml file over here. So you can see that I'm using this image, rabbitmq 3.9 uh, management of Alpine is the latest one during the recording. I have given the container name. I'm also given the volumes to be used where within this volume, I'm telling that this is the definition.js file that you need to hook up within the remote container. And also the config file 
uh, and also the log files that you output. And also I'm doing the port binding. That's the reason why you could be able to access it using the port number 15672. And also the network which I'm trying to use uh, and the health check to see if that particular container is up and running. So this is the reason why you could see all these things are happening for me. And coming back to the original question of the authentication, like where is this login is really even happening? Well, I have created my code in such a way that I have actually given the definition file to have a password hash of this particular admin over here. And the password is a bit clunky. Well, the password is gonna be looking in a much different fashion. I would probably tell you while I'm talking about the shared project. But for now, if you go to the EDA inventory in the app settings.json file, you can see that this is the password which I'm trying to use over here. So that's the hash that you are seeing at the moment. So we can use the exact same thing within our code and start authenticating ourselves so that we don't really get this issue. So we are going to set up all these rabbit MQ stuff starting our next lecture.